Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. What is the most boring named company on the ASX? You could have the argument that it is the company I'll be featuring in today's video, Premier Investments Limited. What do they do? Luckily, I know exactly what Premier Investments do. And in fact, they are a retail company or focused in retail. They do own what's called the Just Group and 100% of the Just Group and Just Group does have a few brands that I think are really high quality. In fact, some of the highest quality retail businesses, not only on the ASX, but in Australia. And those two retail brands are Smeagol and Peter Alexander. Premium Investments also owns uh, portions of Breville and Meyer. So let's get stuck into looking at Premier Investments. I do think this is a high quality company on the ASX and perhaps arguably the highest quality retail company on the ASX. Maybe not the world, but definitely on the ASX. So high praise there for premium investments. So you might think I actually do own some shares in this company. I do not. I am not a shareholder of premium investments. I have been in the past. I don't know why I shouldn't hold on to my shares of this company, because when you look at the long-term chart, I'm talking about the 10-year chart, the share price has gone from the bottom left to the top right. It's exactly what you want in a long-term investment. Um, so the last time I sold out, I just thought I'd be clever and take some profits and then buy in at a lower share price, and the share price is higher. So it has gone higher since then. So I was a little bit too clever for my own good. But currently, I do not own shares in premium investments. doesn't mean I won't buy any more shares. If I do see the share price pull back significantly from current share prices, say below $20, I might take a position at that time. I've already mentioned that Premium Investments is a retail company and they own 100% of Just Group. And Just Group involves Just Jeans, Portman's, Doty, Jackie E, JJ's. And to be honest with you, I don't care about any of those brands at all. The two brands I do care about when it comes to Premium Investments and Just Group are Peter Alexander and Smeggle. And the reason I care mostly about those two brands is because of the growth, fantastic growth in those two brands over the past five to 10 years. In fact, if I was the CEO of this company, and I'm not the CEO, I'm probably not qualified to be, to be the CEO, I would be thinking about selling out of uh, Just Jeans, Portman's, Dotty, Jackie, and JJ's because I don't see much added value for those brands. Now, Pre Investments also is involved in two other companies. They own 25.6% of Breville. And I think that is an absolutely fantastic investment. I do think fairly highly of Breville. I think this is going to become a fairly big company, international company when it comes particularly to coffee grinders, makers, whatever you want to call it. And for funny enough, they are increasing their holdings in Maya, even though Solomon Liu has been quite negative on that company. But it is understandable why they're increasing their position in that company. And it all comes back to the history Solomon Liu has with Maya. I'll talk about that later in the video. Now, onto the CEO. And I just mentioned if I was a CEO, and I'm definitely nowhere near as qualified as Richard Murray, I think Richard Murray is an absolutely fantastic CEO. He was a CEO of JB Hi Fi. In fact, he joined JB Hi Fi as a chief financial officer in 2003 appointed the CEO of JB Hi-Fi in 2014 at 38. So he's not yet 50. So I think this guy, Richard Murray, has a long time left in the retail market. And then Premium Investments um, snatched him from JB Hi-Fi in 2021. So he was appointed as a director, 30 December 2021. He's also, um, say, the founding chairman of the Australian Retailers Association CEO Forum, recently retired as inaugural chairman of the Workplace Giving Australia Leadership Initiative, which aims to encourage Australian businesses to set up workplace giving programs. So it does look like he's potentially getting into philanthropy, which is fairly important when it comes to Solomon Liu. So let's have a look at Solomon Liu, and hopefully you do know the name because it is a fairly big name when it comes into Australian retail. So Solomon Liu has been involved with premium investments for quite a while. In fact, he was appointed the chairman of the company in March 2008 and was, is the largest shareholder of the premier and was previously the chairman of premier from 1987 to 1994. I've already mentioned that he doesn't have an association with Maya. 
So he was a director of Colesmeyer from 1985 to 2002, chairman of Colesmeyer from 1991 to 95, executive chairman to no, in 1995, and vice chairman in 95 and 96. He's also a member of the World Retail Hall of Fame, which I didn't know was a thing, and he's the first Australian to be formally included. He was also a former board member of the Reserve Bank of Australia and former member of the Prime Minister's Business Advisory Council. He's also a philanthropist. So he's been the chairman of a range of philanthrop philanthropic organisations, which is why I was just mentioning about Richard Murray uh, getting into those areas, because he probably has a fairly good mentor here in Solomon Lou. I've already been talking up uh, the quality of premium investments, and I do think this is a high quality company on the ASX, one of the highest quality realtor companies on the ASX. I'd probably put in the top five at least, maybe the number one. I'm not going to rank them yet. Uh, I can think of a few others that I'll probably rank pretty high as well. JB Hi-Fi is another one. The Visa is another one. Uh, Premium Investments, Nick Scarley is another one. So very high quality companies when it comes to rear comp companies. And I'll probably even say some of these retail companies in Australia are some of the highest quality retail companies in the world. Now onto the company's financial year 22 results. I did have to update the share price because I set up this particular slide deck about a week ago. And the share price has done well in the first week of the new year, a share price increasing to $25.79, which means a market cap of this company is just above $4 billion. Revenue in financial year 22, $1.81 billion, profit of 285. Now their reported operating cash flow and free cash flow a little bit higher than I have given here because I take out lease liabilities. And when you take out lease liabilities, because in my opinion, if you're renting stores, which is leases, that is a part of the ongoing day-to-day -day business expense. And I just believe that should be taken into account. We need talking about operating cash flow. Operating is the key word there. So my operating cash flow for premium investments is 186 million and free cash flow is 178 million. Now onto the revenue growth for the company. The first thing I always look at is revenue. Is revenue growing through time? Is it consistent revenue growth? Because you want to invest in companies that are able to grow their revenue at nice, consistent rate. And research has been done on this, and this is the best predictor for a company's shares to outperform the market, and that is revenue growth. So premium investments have very good, reliable revenue growth, increasing from $867 million in 2012 up to $1.5 billion in 2022. So it's almost doubled over the past 10 years. And if you calculate the revenue per share growth, you might say it's not that fantastic. It's not that it's not a number to get overly excited about 6.1% per year. But the company has also increased their margins, particularly the last two years from 2014 to 2020, where margins were below 65%. Now they've risen above 65%. So that means more than likely profit has been growing or earnings per share have been growing at a greater rate than 6.1% per year. So the main thing is revenue is growing at a nice consistent rate. And the most of this revenue growth is because of Smiggle and Peter Alexander. The other thing I should mention here is the quality of earnings has increased uh, quite well over the last few years. So when you look at return on equity and return on investment capital, um, those both have increased over the past few years. So a lot of investors look at return, but maybe not a lot, but I do know quite a few professional investors, a few amateur investors or retail investors, probably the best way to put it, do look at return on equity and look for companies with a return on equity that are greater than 10. Um, and premium investments historically have had or have seen their return on equity less than 10 or lower than 10. So between 2014 and 2020, return on equity for premium investments was hovering around eight. And now it's about 17.8. And return on investment capital has increased from below eight up to 13.4. So you can say that the quality of earnings over the past few years has increased. The question moving forward, forward for this company and a question for investors looking to take a position in this company is whether the company can maintain these quality of earnings moving forward. And that is a question I do have for this company. Now let's have a look at the company itself. You know, you'll notice the sales here is a little bit less than the revenue. And the reason behind that is because of the investment in Breville and Maya, they do get dividends from those investments. So that's not included in the revenue or the sales. 
So when we look at premium investment sales, it's from their just group um, company or business or brands, which includes Smigel and Peter Alexander. You know they do um, sort of mention uh, Peter Alexander and Smigel and put the other brands together into one group called apparel brands. And that is obvious when you look at the growth uh, of Peter Alexander and Smigel compared to apparel group or apparel brands over the past year. But anyway, overall, the group saw sales increase 5.2% over the past year, like for like sales up 5.4%. They also compare their sales to financial year 19. They also mentioned here how many hours were lost or days lost due to COVID-19. But then if you focus on Peter Alexander, Smiggle, and the other brands, there is a big difference here. For instance, Peter Alexander sales increased 11.4%, Smiggle 24.6%, while the other brands actually decrease their sales in 2021 by 2.6%. And the much of that decrease was in the first half, which was down 6.3%. You look at Smiggle in the second half of financial year 22, their sales grew by 61.7%. And online sales are continue, continuing to grow 14.3% higher than financial year 21 and accounts for 22.7% of total sales. So it's probably pretty obvious if premium investments didn't have Smiggle, didn't have Peter Alexander, I probably wouldn't be interested in this company at all, even though they do have a nice investment in Breville. So it's all about Smiggle. It's all about Peter Alexander. If you don't know what those two brands are, the British sure Peter Alexander is all about like pajamas, that sort of thing, while Smiggle is uh, for children. Uh, I have never gone into a Smiggle store, never gone into a Peter Alexander. All I know about those two stores is the growth. People like those stores. Um, so, and kids love Smiggle, it seems like. Anyway, on to the different geographic regions. I always like to look at this, particularly if a company is global, how are those different geographic regions performing? So premium investments are in Australia, New Zealand, Asia, and Europe. For instance, Smiggle, I know, has been doing very well in Asia and Europe, if I remember correctly. Now, by far, most of their revenue is generated in Australia. So $1.2 billion out of the $1.5 billion is in Australia, $147 million in New Zealand, $49 million, or just under $50 million in Asia, and $104 million in Europe. And on the bottom here, we can see the growth in sales per year in those different regions over the past five years. And in Asia, for instance, the last two years, we saw sales depressed because of COVID-19. In the last year, sales increased by 90%. In Europe, sales increased by over 30% in the last year. And that's after, I think about two or three years of negative growth. While in Australia and New Zealand, growth in financial year 22 was quite suppressed. In fact, in New Zealand, sales went backwards. Premier Investments, and I keep wanting to call this company Smiggle, and that could be a good thing to change the name to something like Smiggle, because if they change the name to Smiggle, people would know, particularly if they like Smiggle, to invest in Premier Investments. And the very first time I learned about Premier Investments, I had no idea what this company did, what they owned, but if I if they were called Smiggle, I exactly would know what they do. Anyway, this company is a dividend paying company, and dividends have been increasing over the past 10 years increasing from less than 20 cents up to the last dividend was 79 cents. So nice increase in dividends over the past 10 years. And that is something you want to see as an investor. You don't want to see dividends decreasing through time like Telstra. You want to see dividends increasing through time. And the current dividend yield for premium investments is 4%, fully franked at 100%. And the last uh, pay date or ex-dividend date was the 10th of January, which is... A few days time. So if you want a dividend from premium investments, now is the time to take a position in the company if you are watching this before the 10th of January. Now onto some valuation metrics. Now I consider this company to be fairly high quality, but I am a little bit wary about the PE ratio, which is down to 14.4. So that does look low for this company. And we'll have a look at the PE ratio history for this company over the past 10 years. And this is on the low side, which tells me either the market is expecting earnings to come backwards or the current valuation of the company is probably at really good level. So 14.4 does look cheap for this company. Price of sales ratio 2.6. Price of free cash flow a little bit higher because I take those lease liabilities out at 22. Also did a reverse DCF. So what would the growth be? 
uh, in terms of free cash flow to justify the current valuation. That's only 13.5%. And I do think premium investments could get close to that over the past 10 years. So just based off that reverse DCF, now, if you used earnings per share, that number would have been significantly lower, probably less than 10%, maybe less than 8%. And I definitely think that comp or this company can achieve these sort of growth levels over 10 years. Um, so right now, I'd say premium investors is at least fairly valued. It might be below fair value, but I don't think it is overvalued at current prices. On the 2nd of December, the company did release um, a trading update and things are moving at a nice clip. But the only thing is a premium retail global sales for weeks 13 and 17 of the first half of 23, uh, compared to the same period last year, only grew at 0.1%. But everything positive here, the company is still growing. But there's going to be a lot of thought that eventually in Canada kind of year 2023, we're going to see sales or consumer spending start to decrease as the effect of rising mortgage rates or interest rates have an effect on um, people spending. So I think that will have a possible effect on premium on premium investments. I'm not sure how much it would affect Smiggle because I'm pretty sure parents won't want to disappoint their children by not taking them to Smiggle. I'm not sure about Peter Alexander, but definitely those other apparel brands would have an effect. So at this point in time, wouldn't be surprised to see the earnings for this company start to pull back or look a little bit lower uh, during the year. Wouldn't be surprised to see the company actually issue maybe a profit downgrade some point in the first half of uh, kind of the year 2023. And But in saying that, when you do look at the P-E ratio history for premium investments over the past 10 years, you could say any number or any P-E ratio less than 15 means this company is on the low side of the valuation. Right now, it is below 15. Last time we saw it hit below 15 was during the COVID-19 financial panic, and it fell below 15 for a very brief period of time. During 2018, it fell below 15 for a fairly brief period of time. We'll say maybe six months or so. It fell well below uh, 15 in 2014. And now we've been below 15 for about six months. We did see get as low as about 11 uh, back in June when the share price did get below $20. I think it even might have got below 19. So right now, just based off the P ratio and the history of the P ratio for this company, it does look pretty good value or at the very least interesting. Now onto the charts for premium investments. And the first chart here is the weekly chart over a 10 year period. And this is the sort of chart you wanna see if you're a long-term holder of a company. Share price of premium investments is has gone from the bottom left to the top right. This is also another sign of a high quality company. When you see a chart like this, because this would be the sort of company you buy in at a good price and you just hold it forever. Maybe not forever, but for the long term time because if you bought into premium investments way back in 2013 at a share price of say six dollars you've done fairly well over the 10 year period and when you do look at whenever the share price does pull back it seems like when the share price pulls back to that orange line which is the 100 actually it's the 200 week moving average that seems like a pretty good support level and whenever the share price falls below the 200 moving moving average. That is a great time to think about taking the position. It's only done that twice. Uh, for Actually, we'll say four times, but twice for a very brief period of times in 2019. During the COVID-19 financial panic, it fell through for about two or three months. And then in June of this year, it fell through. Share price actually got down to a low of $19. That was a time to think about taking a position in this company because the share price fell from about $32 all the way down to $19. And now we've seen a nice little rally in the share price of this company over the past six months. So this is a high quality company just based off the 10 year chart. So let's have a look at the daily chart just to see how the share price has been performing in the year and whether the share price is now in an uptrend and whether the sentiment in this company has shifted because there was a bit of negative sentiment, uh, particularly in the first half of 2022. And you can really see the sentiment shifting towards the end of 2021. Share price reached a high of $32.50 in November last year. And then the share price tumbled from $32.50 all the way down to a low of $19 in June this year, which was also the low in the overall market. So premium investments share price was pretty highly correlated to the overall market. So that negative sentiment in the market 
really flow through to premium investments and the share price in premium investments has rallied over the past six months or so, increasing from $19 to just below $26. Now, it's really interesting. $26 is a nice little resistance level because three times in November, December, share price tried to get above $26 and then pulled back. And right now, we're right on that resistance level or just below that resistance level. So the share price moves above $26 on strength. That would be a bullish sign and a possible trading position. So if it, you have if you haven't already taken a position in this company, because uh, if you saw share price get to $19, that would have been screaming really good value for this company. Now could be the time to think about taking a position in premium investments. The next few companies I aim to feature in this Nippy analysis uh, video series include Kogan, Kodan, Advanced Zintech, which is all about sun cream, sunscreen, a company I have owned in the past, uh, but that's when the share price was really, really low. Another company I know nothing about has, uh, it's called GLG Group, uh, TIG code is GLE, but when you look at their logo, it's called GIM, G-H-I-M, Lee, Group of Companies. So I'm really looking forward to doing some research on that company, I haven't prepared that video just yet, and also having a look at James Party as well. That's all I have for this look at Premier Investments, one of the highest quality retail companies on the ASX. If you disagree, I'd love to hear your opinions. Why you don't think this is a high quality retail company? If you agree, or if you think another company, retail company, is a higher quality retail company than this, so maybe Levisa, Nick Scarly, JB Hi-Fi, Shaver Shop maybe, or Dusk, uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.